I'm John Coddington, and I'm here to talk to you today about the Global Genome Initiative. What is it? It's understanding and preserving the genetic diversity of life on Earth. And there's one fact I'd like to take away which is true in a deep sense. There is only one genome. There's one, life happened once, it's one thing. It's ramified, it's ramified so much that parts of it cannot exchange genetic information with other parts, but it's one thing. Go like that. Right. Why did I end up doing this? I started off wanting to go from the right or from the left to the right. I wanted to be a tropical biologist. I wanted to go out. I, I was a tropical biologist. I've been to places. I've been tracked by jaguars. I've held Costa Rican golden toads in my hand. Th that's an extinct species. And the extinction began to bother me. And, the, you know, there are many examples of why this should bother anyone. Anyway, just last month, we heard that the Thwaites Glacier is now unstoppable. And as I went through my life as a biologist, I just couldn't take it any, I just couldn't stay studying spiders. I, I did a lot of stuff on spiders, and I want to tell you something about what I learned from that work. This is the beta diversity of spiders in the Beni uh, Reserve between Bolivia and Paquitza. These are, um, do we get a pointer somewhere? We don't get a pointer. Wow. <laughs> All right. So on the left is Paquitza. Though each one of those is an in inventory. Just take the one in the middle. That there, in Tambopata, we tried to catch every kind of spider there was in one hectare. That's, that's uh, you know, 100 meters by 100 meters. We caught 652 species of spiders using statistical estimators that said there were 1,000. Look at the, look at this, this altitudinal transect over here in Bolivia. 191 observed, 325 observed, 158 observed, about double those. Look at the overlap. That those, those, none of those sites are more than about 50 miles apart. What is going on here? How can there be that many species of spiders packed into so little space? It, it, it's just, it's incredible. So then I thought, well, what's going on at the level of uh, larger things? And I also have to say that for these, these spiders that I'm telling you about, in each one of those cases, say we caught the, the 650 species there, about 70 percent of those species were only seen at one individual. Of those, of those 600, about 400 of them were represented only by a single individual. That doesn't make any sense. To make little baby spiders, you need two. Where's the other spider, right? How come I can't catch the spider? So is anybody else doing any better? And it turns out, no, those, so that, I explained what a singleton is. That's uh, a species represented in an inventory by just one individual. The sampling intensity is the total number of animals you take in the inventory. So if there are 10 species in a hectare and you sample 100 individuals, the sampling intensity is 10, right? The total abundance you take divided by the total diversity that's present. If you graph the one against the other, obviously it goes down, but what it's telling you is that in order to extinguish singletons, you have to catch about a thousand times as many species as there are present. So if there are a thousand species of spiders in a hectare, I have to catch a million spiders before I see them all in abundances of more than one. That's crazy. <laughs> um, then I thought, well, you know what? Species are hopeless. There's just no way we're going to be able to do it at the species level. So then I started looking at all of life, and I found out that all of life, for example, fits into just 9,600 families. All that 15 million, 30 million species, there's only 10,000 families of life on Earth. And most of those are not in GenBank. So this is one tool we have, which is phylogeny, is an incredibly powerful focuser of biodiversity. The, and if we look at families, this is an example from millennia to the present of the first time that a human walked out into the woods and saw uh, an organism that belongs to one of those clades that we rank as family. So the first time someone saw a sunflower, it's up there. And if you look for any of these groups, bees, mammals, birds, spiders, angiosperms, bacteria, we're not finding any new spiders. We're not finding any new families of any life on Earth to speak of. So our exploration of the planet at the family level apparently is pretty much done. There aren't very many new forms of life out there that haven't been seen yet. So that's, that's the other powerful thing, is that we know a lot about life on Earth at the family level. Um, now, why would that matter? Here's an example of uh, 
European spiders, in which we're taking CO1 barcodes, that's a stretch of DNA that's used as a genetic sequence. And they're in the European spiders, there are about 50 families, about 820 species. We took those 873 sequences we generated and we blasted them against themselves. We offered them up against themselves, but getting rid of the, they, each species has to match itself because it's identity, right? How many minutes? One. Wow. Got to move on. Sorry. About 90% about were correct at the family level. Another point is that uh, it's very concentrated geographically. In the forest geo plots, there's about 10,000 species of trees. About 60% of the world total lives there. So what is success for, for uh, the Global Genome Initiative? 50% of the major branches of life on Earth in, in five years. A national partnerships. We're, get, we're making a lot of progress on that. We have the largest natural history biorepository on Earth. It's sitting out there waiting to be filled up. We've built a network of biorepositories around the world. We're having our first international conference in June. And we're also summarizing all the data at the family level and phase two for all the general level uh, for all of, all of formulas of life. This is just one family of spiders. It's got a GGI score of about the 30, it's in the 36th percentile. So, um, if you look at the, at the phyla, this is just the graph of knowledge versus where we know versus what we know about the genomics. The things in the back are tracheophytes and chordates. And why are we doing this? Because bringing biodiversity knowledge uh, to bear on the problems that we face is probably our best way to survive the next couple hundred years. Thanks. Lot, lots of, uh, lots of, oh, how many families are described each year and how much of that is, is morphologically based or known? The answer is we're, we're discovering new families in the sense of more phylogenetic insight into the clades of life. There are many new families that are described in that sense. In terms of someone walking out in the woods or the ocean and saying, damn, that's a new family, it runs to maybe one to two to three. <laughs>